So I guess that's my first question. You've already hit on it. You know, why does America need a third party? We already have chocolate and vanilla. Why do we need a third flavor? Well, um, <laughs> I, I think I, I kind of um, I, I, I have my own doubts about this kind of thing, you know, at, at various times. And, um, you know, I, I kind of think about a lot about the role of uh, of parties. Like, what are they what are they for? Like, you know, third parties, are they to protest or are they to win? Like, what's the the point of it? I had a political science teacher in, in high school, actually, who kind of uh, helped cement some of my um, views about this kind of a pretty matter of fact discussion about the role that parties play. Um, the short of it is um, third parties are influential um, all over the world. They, they do they do affect change, maybe not in the way that they say that they're going to, but they they always make a difference. Um, sometimes it's just by affecting people on the outside. Sometimes it's by um, actually winning. But I, I think what's happening right now in the US is we're entering a moment where um, the Democratic Party and the Republican Party, um, their constituencies are shrinking um, because of polarization. So you have um, this sort of rhetoric and you know policy decisions that are kind of increasing um, in both parties that are, are increasingly not representing the average American. Um, and just because you're a major party now doesn't mean uh, you're going to be forever looking at you, Whig Party. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, so it, I think to just because, you know, we have this system that's dominated by the two parties right now doesn't mean that it can't change. And I think that actually um, it, it's getting to the point where the time is right for change because we need a party that will represent some kind of uh, middle ground or just, you know, even ideas um, that a lot of people on some level agree with. Um, you know, even like Ronald Reagan, big Republican guy, you know, probably the most famous Republican uh, besides like Abraham Lincoln, I guess. Um, he, you know, said that uh, libertarianism was at the heart and soul of, you know, conservative conservatism. Um, a lot of Democrats describe themselves as civil libertarians. Um, there's a lot of like libertarian views that bleed into like both parties. It's just when it comes to actually, you know, when it comes down to it, neither of them are actually like libertarian. But I think that they're, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think that um, some parts of the process are, um, are have really gotten to the point where they're broken and you can't, you won't be able to change anything without getting somebody from the inside in because the, um, the, the current political parties are really entrenched in their ways of doing things. Um, they need to save face. Uh, there's lots of other reasons. They're not going to change. So somebody either needs to make them change or somebody needs to take their place, I think, at this point in history. Well, also, I would say that it's also about choices, right? I mean, because, you know, there's there's an old saying that they, you know, they say that, uh, hey, you know, two choices is one more than they had in uh, the Soviet Union. Because they had elections in the Soviet Union. There was just only one person on the ballot. So uh, a lot of places do that. And I think that it's all about having additional choices, don't you think, Jacob? Yeah, I think so. Well, you know, they they had uh, they had choices in the Soviet Union, you know, like a lot of people were, you know, wanted to point out, you know, you could go. Uh, so it, in Washington, D.C., you know, you could stand in front of the White House and scream down with Reagan. Right. And uh, the Soviet Union is much like that. You could stand in front of the Kremlin and scream down with Reagan. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. So, I like that a lot. Uh, that joke's actually part of that's, that's from a, a Soviet uh, radio show, I believe, like from that area. But yeah, you know, actually in China, in China, there's lots of political parties um, besides the Communist Party. Uh, but the Constitution uh, basically says that the other parties kind of like exist at the pleasure of the Communist Party. <laughs> so the the only the only role of a party in that kind of system is to do things for the other parties. And I think we're actually sort of in a danger of getting this like mentality here in the US where people have this weird like reflexive reaction to trying to run to another party like like you're messing with my thing how dare you mess with my thing don't you know we have a system and yeah um, you know George Washington in his farewell address you know first president of the United States warned about the dangers of political parties and factions um, and you know what, what could happen um, if they you know became too influential I think that we're seeing um, the results that he was warning us about today 